Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Now look at that. Is that beautiful or what? I'm going for a walk this morning and I got to the top of this hill here. And I was like, man, that is just beautiful. I hope you're all doing well today. Not really too much going on. I actually have to get going quickly because I have to start work here in about half an hour or so. But I thought I'd jump in and say hello real quick. And you know, I really want to shout out one of our community members. And I'm actually gonna shout out the person, and this Voodoo Queen. So Voodoo Queen, props goes to you. If you guys go back, uh, I think it's two videos ago, Voodoo Queen left a comment saying that she was doing a class I'm pressure canning and canning all together. And she got four young ladies. She said they were in, her, in their 20s. She got four young ladies together in her home to give them a class on how to can and pressure can. You know how happy that makes me feel? <laughs> Reach one, teach one, repeat, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it's all about. It's about sharing your experience and your knowledge with those that have yet to gain those knowledge-based uh, skills and the experience. That's how we make a better world. And it starts with you and the community that you live in. So props to you, Voodoo Queen. That is awesome. And she also followed up with her comment, I think in the following video, saying that it went really well and that the young ladies were able to leave her house with a few quarts of meats and some jam. So that is a great, great thing that you did. So thank you for that. Because what you did was provide knowledge to some young ladies that will be able to keep that knowledge for the rest of their lives and hopefully pass it on to others as they gain more experience and confidence in their canning skills. So that's this is what we should all be doing, ladies and gentlemen. We should all be teaching and reaching. And of course, you're gonna have your you're gonna have your people that refuse to want to learn. And that's okay because you can only teach and reach those that are willing to listen and or participate. So don't let those that are naysayers in the cause of teaching don't let those people discourage you because you will always find those no matter what walk in life you're in so like i said i'm getting ready to go to work here in a couple of minutes and i wanted to give a shout out to to voodoo queen and uh thank you for doing that and i wanted to show you guys that awesome sunset i wasn't even planning on doing a video until I got to the top of that hill and I saw that sunset. I was like, not sunset, sunrise. What am I talking about sunset? It's, it's like 4.45 in the morning right now. <laughs> and it is a beautiful day. It's, it's uh, I believe it's in like the high 30s right now. So it's beautiful. And look at that over there. It's just beautiful in the mornings here, especially when it's crisp and the sun is just coming over that hill over there that you saw. So ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. I'm walking up a hill here, so you might hear me breathe a little heavy. <laughs> so what are you doing to help others get prepared besides what you're doing to prepare for yourselves?
Okay, I made it to the top of that hill. <laughs> I didn't want to try to talk and get to the top of that hill at the same time. Because Alaska Prepper, ladies and gentlemen, is a fat body and he's out of shape. I think I've been saying that for the last two and a half years that I've been doing this channel. <laughs> but I am trying. So like I said, what are you guys doing to help other people prepare? Now, it's okay if you're not, because you have to take care of yourself first before you can take care of anyone else. Unlike Voodoo Queen, you may not have the time to dedicate to giving classes, but let me tell you what are a few things that I do to try to help other people prepare. I don't know if you can see that, but I, if you can, you can see the sun starting to peek itself over that hill in the distance. I'm sure that this camera will not do it justice, but it is quite beautiful. Beautiful day today, ladies and gentlemen. We still do have snow on the ground, as you can see, but it is steadily melting away since the uh the lows the temperature lows now are above 32 degrees so it's steadily melting away i would say in another week so ladies and gentlemen you know that my primary way of helping to get people prepared is just putting out the word that's why i do my videos so that i can put out the word and encourage others to put out the word as well reach one teach one repeat and then those of you that take it the extra step and actually engage like uh, Voodoo Queen did and actually helping people within your community to become prepared. That is outstanding. But there are some subtle ways also that you can help people get prepared. And I'm going to give you an example. The other day, I texted one of my friends. He's, he's a good friend of mine. I texted him and he's, he's into prepping. Actually, he got into prepping because I started talking to him about it about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And little by little, he started to realize that some of the things that I told him, like the price of food is going to go up. And not just by one or two percent, but you'll notice that it starts to go up, you know, a few percentage each month. Instead of 10 percent in one month, it may go up three or four or five percent in one month. That's not the story today. Now, now it's going up a lot. Uh, I went, where the heck did I go? Yeah, I had to go to the commissary. Yes, I went at lunchtime to the commissary to pick something up. And I already forgot what it was that I needed to pick up. That's how senile I am. But I went and revisited the, the aisle where I got that corn last time that I paid 70 cents for. And that was uh, my last payday prep, I believe. And uh, when I went and looked at it, it was about three days ago, 83 cents. So it went up from 70 cents to 83 cents. So my friend, he started noticing these things and he started noticing that I wasn't just, you know, blowing fluff up, his, you know, blowing smoke up his, you know what, right? So he started listening more and asking questions. And then he started asking, hey, how can I put this away for long term? You know, just like you told me. And I said, hey, go watch this awesome YouTube channel. It's called Alaska Prepper. <laughs> and you can learn how to do all that kind of stuff. But in all, in, in all seriousness, I actually sat there and taught him how to do it. You know, I've had him over my house several times and I would show him how to do some things. Just a second, there's a car coming by and it's gonna to be too loud. There you go. And now he's a full-blown prepper. Oh, there's another car coming by. <laughs> there you go. Nice, let me start walking back down. So like I said, now he's a full-blown prepper, right? And, uh, and what I mean by a full-blown prepper is not that he doesn't have a bunker or anything like that, you know. He, he, he engages in the act of being prepared, in the act of preparedness. That's one of the ways that I try to encourage people to help others to become prepared. You know, I, I would ask some of my co-workers questions like, I remember I had, a, I remember I had about an hour-long conversation with some of my co-workers once and I'm not sure I'm pretty sure that my boss wasn't very happy about that but we just started talking and I asked I was like what would you do if you know if the power went out for a month what would you do I said what about for two weeks 
Or what do you do with the things in your refrigerator? Just the basic questions that we talk about all the time. But these are questions that people in general who are not of the preparedness mindset, these are questions that they're not used to being asked. So I really like to plant seeds. You know, just like with my, with my boss, who's a great guy. I love my boss. Um, I talk to him about, you know, finances and stuff like that and about silver and gold and about 401ks and stock market and all these things, right? And one day he came up to me and said, hey, are you going to go buy any silver today? Because it was a Friday. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, you want to go over there and check it out? And after about two years of me, you know, talking back and forth with him about this, and not every day, but, you know, it, it will come up every once in a while. He went with me to the coin shop. I introduced him to the to Jerry and Dick, the guys that own that work that coin shop. And he bought some silver. And then he went the next week, I believe, or two weeks after that and bought more. But it's not because I was pressuring him into doing it, but because I was talking to him about it and giving him pointers and planting seeds so that he can make up his own mind and decide for himself, should I do this and would it benefit me to do this? So that's the best way that I have in order to help people to become prepared. What I would really like is, I would really like to know, what do you do? Because you know that's my favorite part of doing videos, ladies and gentlemen, is getting your perspective on things and sharing in your experiences through the power of the internet <laughs> and your keyboard. So what do you do, ladies and gentlemen, to help others prepare? And uh, put it down in the comments, please, because I'm sure that I'm going to see things on there that I never thought of and that would probably benefit me in helping others get prepared and benefit the community as well. So let's go ahead and finish our walk home and then we'll call it good for the day because I have to go clean up so I can start my work day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is it. Oh, let me show you uh, what I got real quick. I made a purchase from my neighbor. And I'll show you. It's a great purchase. I actually got, well, I didn't get. I actually uh, asked for an extra two of these because I know that Billy from Frontier Preppers needed some. And these ladies and gentlemen in Alaska, they're almost as gold as insulation. Uh, these are the tanks that I use to hold my my fuel, my heating fuel. And my neighbor, he goes all the way to Anchorage every once in a while and he picks up, you know, 15, 20 of these. And then he sells them for about double the price that he paid for them, which is a great deal for the consumer as well. So like, for example, these were about $125 each, but these are extremely hard to find. And whenever you can find one online that someone is selling, like on Craigslist or something like that, you're, you're talking about $200, $250 to buy one of these. So he goes all the way to Anchorage and he picks them up and he sells them for about a hundred and a quarter. And to me, that's a great deal to get one of these because they're so difficult to get around here. Uh, usually you get lucky and, and find one or two for sale here or there, but it really does pay off to have a neighbor that can get these on a regular basis. 
So yeah, I got a great deal with these. I guess I could consider this somewhat of a payday prep, but it's definitely a prep because with these you can pretty much hold anything. Now they have antifreeze in them, so they have to be cleaned out really well. And more than likely what I'll use them for is for fuel in the future. And I believe that's what Billy is going to use his for. So I got that. And I wanted to go ahead and cover something real quick. This is not something that I really spend a lot of time on, but every once in a while when I go on these walks, someone will ask me, hey, when you go on your walks, do you uh, carry protection? And I, I said, of course, you know, of course I do. And I don't really show what I carry or anything like that on a regular basis, but I don't mind showing this because it's not that big of a deal. It's just a, it's just a little 38 that I carry. I mean, you can see it's got some sweat there <laughs> from the side of my body. But, uh, uh, you know, it's not something that, uh, when, when I think about, uh, about carrying uh, EDC, you know, my everyday carry or my concealed carry, when I think about that, I don't really think about having something that I'm going to get into a fight with. Uh, uh, on the contrary, uh, what I think about is something that will allow me to get away, right? I'm not looking to get into a fight. I'm looking to get away from a fight. So if something happens where someone is trying to, you know, hurt me or something like that. I'm not looking to uh, eliminate this person here, there, and right away. I'm looking to try and eliminate the threat, meaning that I want the threat to be away from me. So if it takes, you know, showing it, or if it takes trying to defend myself with it, then so be it. But, uh, you know, uh, some people want to carry like a really, really big, you know, pea shooter. I don't need that, you know, that this is a 38 and, and it's a 38 special and, and it's got plenty of kick. Uh, but remember, you, just, you also have to be, you know, trained with it. You know, actually, I just went to the range with uh, Mrs. Alaska Prepper yesterday and man, we had a blast. Uh, I didn't bring enough peas though. You know, we only brought like three boxes of peas and we were done with those in like 45 minutes. Uh, but uh, Mrs. Alaska Prepper is a pretty good shot. And uh, we had we had a good time out there. So it was just me and her. We went to the range, had a good time. That, that, those are the kind of dates that you go on when you live in Alaska, ladies and gentlemen. You go to the range. <laughs> so and then after that, of course, we went and had a little bit of dinner. So anyways, people ask me every so often, hey, do you carry when you go on your walks? Do you carry? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, why have it if you're not going to use it? And as far as saying using it, I don't mean actually using it, but having it with you in case you need it. Right. And thank you to the good Lord that I've never, ever even had to pull this out once. Not for an animal, not for a person. Right. So I, I'm very thankful for that. But ladies and gentlemen, if if you don't have a way to defend yourself against someone who is bigger than you and has the advantage over you, then maybe you should consider taking some some classes. Uh, you can go and take a hunter safety course or even take a concealed carry course where you learn a lot about you know firearms and the laws and those things that way you can become more comfortable in addition to that i know that when i lived in washington state there were ranges indoor ranges that would rent to you a firearm that you can actually use there that way you don't have to actually buy one and have your own to go and see how a firearm shoots so that's another thing you want to do is or another thing that you can do is go to a fire firing range where they actually rent you a firearm so you can test it out see how it feels if you've never fired one before go with someone that has all right and take a class you know uh, on a weekend or, or on a day you know in an evening during the, the week that way you can familiarize yourself because even if you decide not to buy one and not to get one at least you're familiarized with a firearm what it does how it works and then if you ever need to use one and there is one available, then you can use one. Right, ladies and gentlemen? So I don't mean to get, you know, to turn this topic into a self-defense topic, but uh, I, it came naturally, so I went with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so having said that, let me go in. I got to get cleaned up, go to work. I hope you guys have a, a great day. It is a beautiful day out there. I kind of envy those of you that are working outside. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're safe and healthy. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. Voodoo Queen. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out. God bless you all.